Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Evening Prayers on the 4th of January 2020. And that opening music was Come Now is the Time to Worship, played by Caleb Brassey, and used with his permission. Um, it's been great, hasn't it, over the Christmas time through Advent and Christmas to have had the privilege to use uh, Tom Schumann's uh, work and for Tom to have led us in prayer uh, while some of us were on holiday. So we're really grateful for his input into our um, prayer community. And uh, we revert back to our um, normal um, night by night uh, prayers. And so we start with our opening praise for Tuesday. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh God, make haste to help us. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are a joy to my heart. How sweet are your words to my taste. They're sweeter than honey to my mouth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And Tuesday evening's psalm is Psalm 121. I look up to the heavens. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you slumber. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade, and the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Amen. And our first reading this evening comes from Joshua chapter 3, um, verses 14, leading into Joshua chapter 4, uh, verses 7. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan. The priests, who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, went ahead of them. It was the harvest season, and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above the point began backing up a great distance towards a town called Adam. And the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on the dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose twelve men, one from each tribe, Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan and carrying them out and pile them up at a place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each tribe of Israel. And he told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it out on your shoulder. Twelve stones in all, one each for the twelve tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? And then you can tell them, they are to remind us that the, River Jordan, the, the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among your people of Israel forever. And then our New Testament reading comes from John chapter 9, reading from verses 1 to 12 and then 35 to 38. Actually, it's just chapters, it's just 1 to 12. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why is this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? 
It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no work can be done. But while I'm here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spat on the ground, made mud with saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eye. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam is sent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbours and others who knew him to be the blind beggar asked each other, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, others said, no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? And he told them, <coughs> the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it in my eyes and told me to go and wash in the pool of Siloam and wash, uh, and wash yourself. So I went and washed and now I can see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know, he replied. So a reflection on the Old Testament reading um, from the book of Joshua. And it's a, a story that you may be familiar with, perhaps not as familiar as some of the other stories. But uh, as I was reading it, I was thinking, well, <coughs> what is it? What is it all about? And why is it important for us? Or what message can God speak to us into our lives tonight? And the first thing I noticed was that the priests were at the top of the procession. And they had the Ark of the Covenant with them. And as the priests just stepped into the water, the river that looked like it was flowing at full flood, we're told that the waters start to recede. And Joshua reminds us that this was not a time when the Jordan was just a mere trickle. Because of the spring rains of this early harvest, the river was swollen and overflowing in its banks. And the people, they'd stood at a previous river, hadn't they, about 40 years before that, when the people of God crossed over in safety through the Red Sea. And God was calling the people of Israel to step out in faith again. In some miraculous way, God stopped the flow of the Jordan River. He may have used a natural occurrence such as an earthquake, as often has been suggested. But the miracle was the timing of it. And the timing was at the hand of God. And the people were able to dry uh, to, to walk across on the dry land in the midst of the Jordan. How did this happen? We will probably never know. But the key to this amazing miracle is the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. In our reading, the Ark is referred to 14 times in these 17 verses. This was all about trusting that God was with them. Trust the, uh, the trusting Joshua, the priests, the Israel, all of them, the people of Israel, trusting that they knew that God was present with them. And the priests stood there with the Ark of the Covenant for the entire time it took the nation to cross the river. The Ark was a visible token of the presence of God. And whilst God remained there, the river remained um, the bed, riverbed remained dry. We're at the start of a, another new year, aren't we? And who knows what this year holds for us? What opportunities will be opened up for us? What challenges we might face? What we might gain in our life? What we might lose? The joys and the sorrows that lay ahead of us. But like Israel, we too can be assured of and trust that God will be with us throughout it. For we don't look to the Ark of the Covenant, but we look to Jesus, 
who is the fulfilment of the Ark of the Covenant, for he is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus has cleared the way to victory over all things. In Colossians 2.15 we read, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in the cross. And as we keep our eyes on and follow behind our victorious Jesus, my prayer at the beginning of the year for all of us is that the rivers of despair and disappointment would dry up. And just after the crossing of the river, each tribe was sent, um, had to send a representative to take a stone so that stones could be set up as memorial. And so too, we need to set up memorials to God for all he's done. Perhaps in our hearts, perhaps we keep a journal. Perhaps, like me, you have posters and sculptures and pictures in your home to remind you of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. As I look around my bedroom, on one wall I have a, a poster that says, uh, be, be at rest, my soul, Psalm 62, 5. I have a slate heart on another wall with the words of Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know I am God. And surprise, surprise, I have an icon, which I painted a few years back at a retreat centre. Elsewhere in the house, we have various paintings and posters. So we too, like the people of Israel, can teach our children and our children's children about the great things that God has done for us, so that the work of God will never be forgotten from generation to generation. Amen. We're going to listen now. Um, to a Graham Kendrick song for the joys and for the sorrows and this performance is used with permission from Jill Kendrick. <laughs> For this, I 
Testament song is the song of love from 1 John 4 7 to 11. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not know love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and set his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. And we turn now to our evening prayers. Let us pray. Let us pray, loving God, to you, for your care and love for us. We give you thanks. Watch over us this night and keep us in the light of your presence. May our praise continually blend with the song of all creation until we all come to those eternal joys which you promise in your love. Amen. Living God, we thank you that you are not just with us here in a prayer time but also in the daily round of life, waiting to meet us, lead us and bless us. Help us to glimpse your presence and not to close our eyes and minds to the work of your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to have things in our life that help us to remind us of all that you have done for us. Help us to live each life, each moment of our lives, conscious that you are by our side. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, in like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of your world before you now. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who have more than enough but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in their life, who indulge in dangerous or self-serving activities to dull their pain of loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news we have received offering our lives in the service of your kingdom, where the last are first and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we think of the East Midland Synod of the United Reformed Church, we pray tonight for the ministers and the elders and the members of our churches across Leicestershire. We pray, Lord, where there is darkness, they may bring your light to the glory of your name. And we continue to pray for all those facing the challenge of COVID-19, especially for strength and resilience and protection for all those who are responding in hospitals, care homes and administering the vaccinations. We give you thanks for the rollout of the vaccinations and the booster programme throughout the UK. But we continue to pray for aid and relief and an equitable sharing of the vaccines of the across all countries in their battle against COVID-19. 
We pray especially for care staff and NHS staff who and all key workers where there's been such a strain of where absentee uh, workers through um, either having caught COVID and having to self-isolate or have been in contact with people. So Lord, we just pray for resilience and strength and an end to this pandemic. We pray for all those affected by the typhoon in the Philippines and pray that the right aid will get through to those most in need. And we continue to pray for healing and wholeness, comfort and strength for those who ask us to pray for them, trusting that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will and offering us salvation through Jesus. You make us whole and at peace. So Lord, we pray for all those who are facing difficult decisions, anxious times, and for those who are facing mental health worries. With Liz, we continue to pray for her 12-year-old great-nephew Ryan and for her daughter Emma. With Prince, we continue to pray and for Cheryl. With Andy, for his dad Mike and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. With Judith, for Catherine. With Uncle Tara as she returns to work. And for the Reverend Graham and Vera Masgrave. And we pray for all those who grieve the passing of a loved one. Especially we pray for those grieving for Peter Matt Pay. Especially for Joe and their four children, Mark, Michelle, John and Matthew and the grandchildren. And also for those who grieve the loss of the Reverend Margaret Taylor, especially for the members of her family and her friends at Loughborough United Reformed Church. And in a moment of silence, Lord, we just lift up to you those known to us in need of prayer tonight. Lord, we pray for healing and wholeness in each of these situations, according to your will. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.
night and God bless.